Right, the purpose of this then is to find the distance of a point to a plane. Now here's an arbitrary plane I'm drawing here. This is a plane that could have any orientation space. I've just taken a viewpoint that apparently makes it look horizontal. And then you take some point not lying on the plane, and the distance is defined to be, because there's all sorts of distances from that point to the plane, the shortest distance. That would be the distance following the normal direction to the plane, the line that would hit the plane at right angles in all directions. Call that point where it hits N. Or give this plane a name. So this is the plane AX plus BY plus CZ equals some constant K for all points lying on it. <coughs> now one way of finding that distance, I'll just call that distance D there, would be find the point of intersection of that line. Because I know the normal to that plane, or I know a vector in that direction, that would be those coefficients. So the components of the normal vector is the same as those coefficients. So this vector, or any multiple of it, lies in that direction, or negatives in the opposite direction. <coughs> then I could do this. Since I know a vector in the direction of the line, and I know a point on the line, I can get the equation of the line. Put the equation of the line into parametric form, substitute them into the equation of the plane, and then you'll be able to find the point of intersection. Once you know the point of intersection, you can use the coordinates of P and N to work out the distance between them, which is quite lengthy. But you don't need to do that. In fact, I don't even need to know what N is. The simple way to do this would be to use a projection of vectors. Pick some other point in the plane, some other point A, which I also don't need to know. It's sufficient that A lies in the plane so it fits this equation. And then the distance that I want is simply the projection of that vector onto the normal. That's the principle behind this. The distance of the point to the plane is the projection, and A could be anywhere, because they all project to the same vertical, so the same normal amount rather, is simply the projection of PA onto the direction, I'll say, onto the direction of the normal to the plane. That's the principle behind it. And what that means in practice is this. Well, the projection of that onto the normal would be the scalar product. So that would be PA dot any vector that lies in that direction. Now, I'm not going to use PN because I don't know it, but that's going to be a multiple of N. So PA dot N would do. <coughs> now, PA dot N means the length of N, which might just be a small, say it's of length 2, times the projection of P8, which is what you want onto it, say that actually was 6, that would give an answer of 12. But if you divide by that N, you'd be dividing at that 2, leaving you the 6 that you want. So divided by the length of N. Put the absolute value there, <coughs> just in case they're going in opposite directions. And that would give you the distance. The projection, I just want to find what's the projection of this line, like the shadow of it, the projection of this line onto the normal line. Do the scalar product, the scalar product of that vector with any vector, it doesn't need to be this length, and then simply divide out that length, and you'll be left with this length. <coughs> now, I've still got numbers in here. I've got P's and A's as if A matters, but I don't need A, because I know that P A means A minus P. So it's a minus p dot n over the length of n, taking the absolute value, which means I've got a dot n minus p dot n. And this is where it gets even better, <coughs> because a dot n is simply the value of this dot n, which must be k. That was the way you derived the equation of the plane in the first place. The equation of that plane is n dot anything on the plane comes to k. So a dot n simply comes to k. I'll call that k1 because something else is going to happen here. Now p <coughs> dot n means putting the components of p, which would be x, p, y, p, z, p, <coughs> into this equation. So that would be a, x, p, b, y, p, c, z, p. That wouldn't come to k1 because p doesn't lie in the plane. You only get k1 for any points that lie on it, it'd give you some other number. If I did a, x, p and so on, it might give you some other number. I'll just have to put it down quickly down here. Like k2. <coughs> and 
that defines the whole plane. That actually defines a whole plane parallel to the plane we've got, but passing through the point P. So what you, this effectively says is, at the same time as finding the distance of a point to a plane, it also finds the distance between two parallel planes. This by considering a point on the parallel plane. <coughs> so that would be K1 minus K2 divided by N for the distance between the point and the plane, or if you will, between two parallel planes. It simply means that this number, another instance of that would be, this number at the end defines a distance, a distance between planes, or a distance between this plane and the origin, for instance. The distance between that plane and the origin, since at the origin the components would be zeros, coordinates would be zero, so that give a zero there, that means that any plane that you've got, the distance of that plane to the origin would be the number at the end divided by the length of the vector, the normal vector defining it. Now I'll just do two examples then. Right, first example, simple one. What's the distance of this point to that plane? Now you don't need a visualisation often. It's quite handy to develop visualisations of the way things look. What would that plane look like? Although it is difficult to draw a plane in three dimensions. If you take your sort of standard axis here, I'll have to draw them all in. So I've got my X, my Y, and my Z axis, and there's the origin with the cross there. Then you could show a portion of that plane fairly accurately by putting down the intersection with the axis. So it would intersect the X axis when the other two coordinates are zero. So it's going to cut the X axis at one. It would intersect the Y axis when the other two coordinates are zero. So it's going to cut there at one also. It'll cut the Z axis when the other two are zero. So it's going to cut there at 1. Now that defines a portion of the plane that you can visualise. It defines a triangle. You can always get that. So <coughs> what I've got for this plane then is, if I hide that bit behind it a bit more, is in that first octant here, defined by the positive x, y and z, that corner of a room, this triangle would appear. That's all of the plane that would appear in your room looking down at that corner. It shows you that the plane lies in this direction away. The plane is above the origin in that sense. And then this point, the point 1, 2, 3, lies off the plane somewhere. So I've got the point here, I've got this plane, which you could extend, that's the only portion appearing in your room, would hit it here. And that's the distance I want. What's the distance of the point to this plane? Which then, of course, the plane sits off like this somewhere. But that's difficult to visualise. Triangle's quite a handy thing. Well, that's the same saying. What's the distance between that point and the plane? Or what's the distance between that plane and a plane that's been shifted up parallel to it so it passes through the point P? It's the same thing. So we'd have this. So I've got the distance is going to be over the not length of the normal. It's going to be <coughs> this plane goes through one. What's the value of that equation if I put the one, two, and the three into it? to get the second one. So I'll just put that into it then. So I've got x plus y plus z for the point P would come to 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. So on the plane, the value is 1. At the point, the value is 6. So it's going to be 6 take away 1 to put it the positive way around to avoid having to put in the moduli, modulus signs. Over the length of the vector n, the length of the vector n, that's 1, 1, 1. So that's going to be root 3. So what I've got is 5 upon root 3. The distance between the point and the plane is 5 upon root 3, which you can rationalise the denominator if you like. Different numbers. What's the distance of this point to that plane? Equivalent to what's the distance between a plane passing through this point parallel to that plane? Well, you don't need a visualisation, you could straight up that little formula that would do, but it's quite handy to develop a sense of visualising what the planes look like. And you can do that, oh, for goodness sakes, and you can do that just by thinking of how does it appear in your little room comprising of the first octant where all the coordinates are positive, where one wall would be the XZ plane, one wall would be the YZ plane, and the floor would be the XY plane. Well, where does it intersect? X, make Y and Z zero. That goes into that, not exactly, but around about 24, so it cut it about 24. That's approximately. Y, that's easier. If they're gone, that's 95. Oh, that's not in proportion anymore. Z, if they're gone, then that would be, that's about 12, but that's negative 12, so it's cutting below. 
which means it's cutting through, it would be cutting through your floor here and then passing below the origin. So this plane is cutting down through, passing under the origin. The point you want is at 1, negative 3, 7, up here, which is above the xy plane. So it's in that room that's backing onto you there. So that's the point you want. And you want the distance from that point until it hits this plane. Or you can think of it as the distance between that plane and the plane through P. It's maybe easier to put it down that way. What is the equation of the plane, the parallel plane through P? Well, that just means putting those numbers into this because it's got the same direction, a normal vector, and finding the new constant that comes at the end. So for this it would be 4 times 1 plus just a negative 3 minus 8 times 7. So that's going to give you a 4, take away 3 is a 1, take away a 56 is a negative 55. So this plane is at the opposite side of the origin from that one. Then, distance. The distance is just going to be the difference in those numbers. 95 take away negative 55 divided by the length of the normal vector that was used to define them. So divided by, and that's going to be 4, 1, 8. Negative 8 doesn't really matter. So that's 16, 1, 64. So that's going to be 150 over, and that part's going to be 67 to 81, root 81, which is 9. So there's the distance. The distance between those two planes, or the distance from the point of the plane, is going to be 150 upon 9 units, whatever units are having to be used.